the greatest gift is that all human beings are challenged with the questions of who am I, where, where is it going, what's next life, if there is one, what can I do so that I live a fulfilled life with no least regrets, fears, anxieties, paining others and myself. How can I go through this illusion of time and space, this short term, from birth to death, without causing a great deal of more disturbances and insecurities, darkness. You need to look at the basic foundations as to who are you, who am I. Essentially, we are made of two different entities belonging to different zones of consciousness. One of them is called soul, spirit, or ruh, or whatever, is cosmic, we don't know its nature, it is mysterious, from which life emerges, and the other side has been evolving over billions of years as life on earth, culminating in the human state, homo sapiens sapiens, with considerable complexity of entity, you and I, or the billions of cells we have and the movements within them and how it tries to preserve life and the autonomic system and how if you overdo it, you just fall asleep and on and on and on. There are multiple layers that come into play inadvertently. And we are given also a very little choice of doership. Now you can interfere, you can stop eating or rest or stop talking or whatever. You are given a bit of a choice in an ocean of self-perpetuating, self-adjusting, self-propagating flow of nature. And any time you and I try to go against nature, we suffer. And the last few hundred years, human beings became a bit too cozy, caring for comfort and ease and food and things. So we have become quite active in the physical sense, but we have become dim-witted because we don't constantly remember the fact that this mystery of life is the ultimate treasure and it can leave any minute. And if there is such a thing as a purpose in life, then it must be for me to truly lose the identity of me and live the light that is transmitted from my soul or spirit, which gives me, if you like, that amazing ability which we call being alive so that's the purpose to be alive and alive meaning in the now and now is timeless now perpetuates itself into eternity and that is why we don't like to be restricted in time that's why we love when you are given more time more years more months more days even more minute if you suddenly find yourself you have five more minutes before the appointment. You are, it's wonderful. You like to have more time. Time emanates from the timeless. The timeless is eternal. Time is the manifestation on earth of that which is timeless, which is eternal. The soul, the spirit is eternal. It continues living. But the so-called I which is a combination of life itself and the animal tendencies, self-propagating, self-helping, eating, sleeping, and also giving the illusion of the independence of the self or the ego self. This is the issue. Don't deny the self. Of course, if you attack a person, they resist and they 
want to maintain life. Obsession with life is the greatest power in each one of us. You're obsessed with it. So the issue of loyalty will disappear when your life is under question. So you, because your loyalty is to the origin of it all, the divine God. So that is your loyalty. And to the way it manifests is life in you. You will do anything to defend it. And we have learned a lot the last many thousands of years, and killing each other, eating each other, then communal warfare, and then national warfare, and all of that. I think we are all coming to a point in life that we know most of these activities are futile, and they are unnatural, and because we have not been honest. If you are really totally, truly honest to yourself, you know, all what you want is to be reassured that the future is better. That is hope. Tomorrow is better. After death is better. You're not incumbent because the real you is a soul or spirit that is mysterious. It is depicting life itself. But otherwise, it's incumbent. The body, the mind, the biography, the fears, the anxieties, the air, the breathing in, out, and all of the other <clears throat> interaction with the materials. The balance of the four essential materials in us, air, water, fire. It's unavoidable. So <clears throat> the natural way is to accept the limitations we have in this world. There are numerous levels, degrees, intensities of limitations. Once you accept it, then you're present. If you're present, then you're at the door of now. And that now is eternal. It does not end, does not change with the death of body and mind and memory and emotions. So the whole business is about connectedness, unification with, being at one with, that which is eternal. So every human being as such is a real seeker of the divine or that which is eternally, constantly, boundlessly real. It's not subject to space and time. You and I in this body, as a soul or spirit, which is heavenly, is subject to space and time. It's one another, another day. It's too hot. We need to cool down. Otherwise, we perish. It's this. We are hungry. You need to maintain your body with fuel and, 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 and. and. So we, this is natural. If you flow with nature, then you have no fear. Itself will tell you, now you need to go faster, slower or rest, or don't, or do, say, or don't say. But we are constantly following some idea of an efficient program. What is efficient? You're hanging on air. Are you ready to leave your body? Have you identified yourself with your soul or spirit? Or have you identified yourself with your reputation or your color of skin? or whatever you know. All of these are transient. So the issue is really you and I and him and, and it. Once you see anything that's alive is due to a spirit or a soul. So you respect anything that's alive, including that which may sting you or a snake that may bite and kill you. You respect the life there. It is following a program in nature that is to do with its limitations and its survival. So that is the story.